I suggest a variables analysis approach to open data exploration. Another way to tackle analysis of data is to explore the number and nature of the variables being presented. How many variables? What's your level of measurement? This approach is perhaps most appropriate to an introductory statistics course. In introductory statistics, one is either exploring basic statistics, running correlations, or comparing means. At a more advanced level, in a more advanced course, this approach might be deemed inappropriate. But the reality is at the beginning level, there's only certain things you can do with data, and how that data is laid out can tell you what you can do. So I'll link this below the video, this section of the textbook, but you should read through this uh, and read through it carefully. The core is this uh, chart here and a couple other charts farther down. Uh, this is another approach. In 12.1, I talked about we ask questions of the data. In this case, we look at the structure of the data and realize there's only some things you're going to be able to do. If, if I'm only given a single variable, that's one column of data on a spreadsheet. There's only certain things I can do. I can do basic statistics, box plots, IQs. These are things I can do down here, the basic statistics. I can do them. But there's not much else I can do with a basic single variable set of statistics. If I have two variables, that's two columns. Remember, the variable name is usually in the header, possibly along with units, and data is below. There's three different things I might be looking at. If the variables are different, I'm probably looking at some kind of a relationship of paired data. If the variables are the same and they come in a set, a paired set, like a before and after data set, I might be doing a paired t-test. And if I have two variables that are the same, but totally different samples are measured, I might be an independent samples t-test. And then you can look at some of these others on your own. So this is another approach to looking at what you might do. Well, let's take a look at this. Here's a jump rope contest. Whoever jumped the most jumps won the contest. This was held at a school here on Pompeii some years ago. And I timed and counted jumps during the contest uh, out of curiosity more than anything else. The rate is the rate at which the jumper jumps rope and jumps per second. You can see the rates here, anywhere from you know, 0 0.74 or 0.32 jumps per, this is uh, jumps per second, uh, up to two or even more than two jumps per second. So this would be a fast jumper at 2.27, 0.32 a slow jumper. Is there any relationship here between the rate and the number of jumps made? And many jumpers tried going slowly and carefully so as not to trip over the rope, which would follow them out. Is slow but steady and sure better to go slowly and more carefully? Or do you do better to go faster, jump faster? What works better for winning this contest? Well, statistician, about the first things, if you want to see whether there's a relationship between two data sets, between two samples uh, such as these, this is paired data. This is the rate. This is how many the jumps the jumper made. The jumper the, in row two here, the jumper jumped at 1.68 jumps per second, and they jumped a total of 102 times. So I'm going to take that data, select it, Insert a chart. Very helpfully, uh, the uh, Google Sheets has suggested that I use a scatter graph, and that's indeed what I want to use. That doesn't look very promising, does it? Kind of looks like a mess. But I do see a lot of empty space up in the 125 corner, and I see some space down in the 2O corner down here, uh, the lower right corner corner is a little empty and the upper left is a little empty. So that gives me some hope that maybe there's a relationship here. Not a very strong one perhaps, but maybe there is one. I'm working here in the um, uh, in a laptop so I can go ahead and I like to add a trend line if I can. 
I like to see the equation. I like to see the coefficient of determination. Remember the R squared? We're in chapter 4 here. I'm starting to see the possibility of a pattern. There's a line there, and that line has this positive slope. I have an R squared of about 0.34. So right off the bat, I, I know some of the basic statistics I, I'm going to want. I'm going to want to have a look at the slope and report that. The slope will be a first to report. And uh, the, remember backwards. I select the, the Y data than the X data. That number had better agree with this number. I'm going to, to go ahead and take a look at the intercept here just so I have it. That's a basic statistic to report when you're working with a regression like this. And that's the direction I've decided to head is in the direction of a regression. And perhaps most important, the correlation R, the Carl Pearson correlation coefficient R, the product moment correlation coefficient R. So I'm going to uh, select this data, that data, and the, the correlation is 0.58. That's moderate. That's a moderate correlation. That's kind of surprising, given what a mess the chart looked like. But that's a moderate correlation. If you're wondering about the 0.34, remember, that's the coefficient of determination. The coefficient of determination is simply R squared. That tells you how much of the variation in the jump rate explains the count rate. But I've also got something else rather interesting. Look at the sign on the slope. It's positive. I've got a positive slope. This suggests... Uh, contrary to what I was thinking, that, you know, I was thinking if you go slow and careful, you won't trip over your rope and you'll do more jumps. But that's not true. This is a positive relationship. I'm expecting negative. But here it's telling me that the faster you jump, the more jumps you make. That people who go slow and easy, the people down here at the bottom of this, don't do as well. They get fewer jumps. Our slowest jumper only makes it through 10 before they trip on the rope. The contest winner, well, that's somewhere up here. Uh, let's see, count, our highest count is this one, 111. 111 jumps was being done at 1.64 jumps per second, a pretty good speed. And we have uh, some other fairly high counts in this range. So there's a, a sweet spot somewhere in here, perhaps. And then perhaps these people are simply going too fast. But, barring some sort of nonlinear relationship, which is beyond the scope of the course, this, as a first approximation, uh, the linear regression suggests that the faster you jump, the more jumps you're likely to make. It does almost look like there might be a couple populations, one down here and another one up here. But, now I can write up my findings. My basic, my most important finding is that as the rate increases, the count increases, that my correlation is moderate at 0.58, solidly moderate correlation. This is a moderate correlation. That's not, it's not low, not high, right up the middle, moderate correlation. Do not confuse correlation with that effect size of chapter 11.3. Here I'm solidly in Chapter 4, Paired Data. And so I would now write up, uh, rate is related to count, and the uh, uh, faster the rate, the higher the jump count in general. In general, and it's roughly speaking. The appropriate chart, this would be the appropriate chart. Here's a, a, a fine chart. I might want to change the name to something more meaningful, but that's a fully appropriate chart. Now, this week, uh, we'll be looking at moving these over to uh, uh, slides. So you'll have a blank slide document to work with. I'll go ahead and... Uh, Pull up a slides document here. 
this will be my jump rope presentation. So I'll probably give that uh, give that a title down here. Jump rope presentation. Uh, a contest. At a so I want to show you how you can get stuff uh, in to your Google slide. Um, I'll do a new slide. It'll give me a new slide. Uh, probably I want to start off maybe that I don't need to paste the data across but the, the graph uh, I'll, I'll put the graph so you can see how to do a graph I, I don't actually need this box here I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can delete that box out yeah I didn't need that box insert go down to chart from sheets And then uh, now I've got to wait for the internet to catch up to me. Spreadsheets. All right, I got a jump rope contest here. I'll select the jump rope contest. There's only one chart in that spreadsheet, so I'm going to go ahead and import it. I'll leave it linked to the spreadsheet. That way, if I edit in the spreadsheet, it'll the change will be reflected here. But that's how I get a chart into slides. Just that easy. Now, I like that slide, so I'll probably just uh, duplicate that slide. I'm, uh, I'm in the new slide. I'm going to take the chart out of this one. And this is going to be uh, some basic statistics. Uh, this one, I can go back to, my, uh, to this. I believe we can simply uh, do some formatting here, make it look a little prettier. Something, find some color to it. Maybe font it up a little bit nicer, enlarge it some, um, bring it over, and then I'm gonna. This one I'm just gonna do copy, control a uh, command C or control C copy, and I'm gonna try just pasting that in. It says paste table link. Yeah, go ahead. But it's not where I want it, but I can put it where I want it. It's a little bit tiny. Ha. Oh, it's still a little tiny. Okay. Well, then what I can do is. Just come over here and select it. Let's get that guy up in size so someone can read it. There we go. I'm just increasing the font size. Make it easier. I probably should uh, de-link it from the uh, unlink it because I don't want it to reset at this point back to what's in the spreadsheet. I'll take this down, maybe call it 36. I'll do some manual rounding just for fun. There's a lot of decimals here I don't need. Uh, yeah, that's right. Try to get my rounding right. Just make it easier for the audience to understand what I'm saying. And now I better add some conclusion to what my results are. I'll have to discuss what those the table and, and graph mean. Uh, but here I'll simply go to slide. And I'll do a uh, new slide. And that will be fine. Uh, here I can have my discussion of results. And so here I can say uh, there is a moderate correlation between the jump rate and total jump count of uh, 0 0.58. Um, this uh, means this suggests that faster jumping leads to higher jump counts, which is contrary to my initial expectation. Now, this is a real simple sort of data set, nothing too complicated to, to work with here, uh, but just something to so I don't have to have a really complicated discussion. It's a kind of plain looking, not very good looking. Maybe I should gussy it up some. You know, find some. Oh, sorry. Find one to find something good. There we go. Hey, that formats it all. Yeah, it looks a little better now. A little bit. 
so this is Google Slides, a really important tool in business, education, anytime you want to do a presentation. You present by clicking on the present button in the corner and you can present and it'll present your results and do all of that. Uh, and it's the this that then when you're done you'll you'll uh, submit this from inside uh, Schoology. You'll still submit your presentation. Uh, you don't mess with the title. That's already preset by Schoology the, up at here, the, up in the top. Don't mess with that one. Uh, uh, mine messed with it. I shouldn't have touched it. But uh, <laughs> but in any case, that's what you're doing this week because we don't usually show an audience a raw spreadsheet. We usually move the critical pieces we need to slides and show them our slides so we can see what they uh see what they look like, uh, show them in a presentation. On Wednesday, you'll have a chance to try uh, sharing your uh, presentation with me. If you like, uh, by Zoom, I'll get information out on that later, and uh, you'll be able to uh, practice sharing your screen to me so that you can practice actually delivering your uh, presentation if you like. It'll be a, a chance to practice practice it in Zoom. Uh, you'll be the one presenting. I'll let you have control of the screen and run your presentation. That's on Wednesday, so you may want to work on getting something to practice with for Wednesday on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, and then I can give you some feedback on what you've done, and you can alter it and then uh, submit that. You don't have to submit to share on Zoom. Jump rope contest data. Uh, 